we come to meditation with ideas about how wonderful it's going to be. The mind settles down with the breath. Waves of pleasure, rapture come over the body. Everything is at peace. That's the idea. But before that idea becomes a reality, you're going to discover there's going to be pain and there are going to be distractions. And to get through the pain and distractions requires both patience and ingenuity. The word for patience in, in Pali, kanti, also means endurance and also means tenacity. In other words, you're not just sitting here passively on the receiving end of the, the pain or the distractions. You're tenacious in trying to figure them out. Because you're not really going to get past them until you figure them out. You can't just blot them out. Concentration does require some insight. We hear all the time, you need concentration first and then the insight comes. A lot of practical experience, together with what the canon says, indicate that there has to be some insight. You have to understand the mind to some extent before you can get it to settle down. It means you've got to figure things out. To figure things out, you have to watch them. This is why when the Buddha, when he gave instructions to Rahula, his son, before teaching him breath meditation, taught him, make your mind like earth. People throw disgusting things on the earth, the earth doesn't get disgusted. People pour perfume on the earth, the earth isn't excited. It just stays right there, impassive. In other words, not telling you to make your mind like a clod of dirt. But he is telling you that if you want to understand things, you first have to have this principle that you are able to sit with through things. Because then when he goes on into describing the stages of breath meditation, it is very proactive. You breathe in certain ways, you breathe with certain intentions in mind. You want to shape your experience, but you want to shape your experience based on some understanding. So you experiment. This is what keeps you going. In other words, you don't let yourself be solely on the receiving end. This applies both to pain and distractions. When pain comes, you ask questions about it. One of the first questions is, is there pain everywhere in the body? Well, no. If there are pain everywhere in the body, you die. There have got to be some areas of the body that are comfortable. Focus on those first. Because the secret to patience is that you focus on your strengths. You focus on, in the midst of things that are pretty miserable, at least where is some amount of pleasure. or someplace where you're relatively safe, that you can take as a basis for your strength. Focus on that. And as you focus there, then the whole idea of being patient doesn't seem so onerous, doesn't seem so heavy. And look at your mind's tendency to make more out of the pain and more out of the distraction than you have to. And John Lee has an image of plowing, in which you're plowing a field with a water buffalo and you tie a big bag to the water buffalo's leg and all this dirt that flows off the plow you put in the bag. Of course, you're going to get weighed down. But that's a good symbol for how the mind often reacts to pain, or to the simple fact that you're sitting here for a whole hour. You think, oh, all, all this long time I've been sitting here and I don't have anything to show for it. Drop what's in the past entirely. The pain in the past is no longer there, so why think about it? Don't think about how long you've been sitting with the pain. You're just here right now. And the same goes for the future. Don't think about how much longer it's going to last. Otherwise, if you're weighing yourself down with the past pain and anticipating the future pain, it's putting too much pressure on the present moment. 
because you've got the physical pain here already, then there's the memory and the anticipation of the pain, and that gets piled on top, and things get unbearable. But keep reminding yourself the past is gone, gone, gone. Every moment, as soon as it appears, it's gone. In fact, think of the pain as going away from you, rather than coming at you. The lesson here, of course, is that your perception of the pain has a lot to do with how much it's going to weigh down the mind. So change your perception. If you notice there's periods when the pain seems to be bothering the mind more than other times, okay, what happened? What thought went through your mind that made it more burdensome for the mind? Can you blot that thought out? Replace it with a different thought. And as you get more proactive toward the pain here, you don't feel like you're on the receiving end so much. And you find that as you get more proactive, it begins to recede. It may still be there, but it doesn't have the same presence. It doesn't have the same power as when you simply let it come at you. Dealing with distraction is something else. A large part of the problem, of course, is a lapse of mindfulness. But especially if you're just coming here, there's kind of a momentum for the past few days outside of the monastery that's going to carry over into your first couple of days here. So realizing that it'll take a while for things to settle down, for that excess energy to wear itself out, what are you going to do in the meantime? You'll find some little spot in the body that's comfortable, or find some topic that you like thinking about. As long as the mind has energy to think, think about something that is not just the breath, like the contemplation we did of the body parts just now. A lot of people don't like that, but it can actually be a very calming process. Realizing that everybody's body is just like this. All the issues we have about our body, whether we like our body or don't like our body, they get cut through when you realize that when you open up your body and everybody else's body, there's nothing you really want to look at. And there's no reason to feel jealous about other people's bodies or to be worried about your appearance. This allows you to focus instead on what you can do with your body, what you can do with your mind, in the sense of creating good karma, doing skillful things. So you can think about the fact that the body is just these different pieces. You might think about the skeleton. Visualize the skeleton to yourself and then just go through each bone, one by one by one. Start with the tips of the fingers. Relax your hands around the bones that you're thinking about. And then work your way up to the wrists, the forearms, the elbow, the upper arms, the shoulder. Then start down at the feet, tips of the toes, the bones and the toes, the bones and the feet, up to the ankles, the shins, the knees, the thigh bones, the pelvis, up the spine, vertebrae, vertebrae by vertebrae, up to the skull. As long as you've got the energy to think, think about these. Visualize them and also have a sense of relaxing around whatever you're visualizing. In other words, you're not just on the receiving end. You try various things. You probe. You question. You take the initiative. This is what the, the tenacious side of the practice. You keep at it. And even though part of the mind may be in a lot of turmoil, you can find there's a little corner that's not. Then I can actually think about what you want to think about or be still with the breath if you want to finally want to be still with the breath. Think of your mind as being like a large room. There may be somebody off in the corner talking, but you don't have to get involved in their conversation. And the fact that they're thinking doesn't mean that it's going to wipe out the experience of the breath. It doesn't have to, let's put it that way. If you let it, it will, but if it doesn't have to, the breath is still there. You're still breathing. So learn how to separate yourself from the chatter in the mind. 
and don't worry about how long it's going to last. As long as you're not getting involved, that's the important thing. Think of the, the chatter going on as past karma and your determination not to get involved as your present karma. And focus on your present karma. Let the past go. And this way you find it a lot easier to stick with things. The fact that you can sit here long periods of time doesn't seem to be such a chore. Because you're not carrying around the past. You're not carrying around your anticipation for the future. Whatever happens, it's, you note it and it's gone. You note it and it's gone. That way you can sit here with a sense of lightness. So this is how you become patient. This is how you become enduring. Not by just talking to yourself about how long a slog it's going to be. By reminding yourself the stuff that was weighing you down in the past is gone. The stuff weighing you down in the future is gone. It's not here yet. All I've got is the present moment. And you stick with that, stick with that, stick with that, and it's stitching together these little moments of the present, stitching them and then letting the past go, stitching them, letting the past go, connecting them in this way. Connecting your mindfulness. Let everything else go. And that's how you get into concentration. By keeping your object in mind. First, in spite of all the other noise and all the other stuff that's going on. But as you really are single-minded in pursuing this, then things begin to quiet down. If there's pain in the body, you have a place to focus that's not in pain. As for the thoughts, you're no longer feeding them. The thoughts keep coming back again and again and again, like stray cats and dogs, because you feed them, i.e. you pay attention to them. Even getting upset about them when trying to chase them away, they've got you. You've given them food. So let them be there. But you don't have to be with them. If you notice there's any tension in the body that's related to the thoughts, let it disperse. Breathe right through it. Any tension building up around your pain, breathe right through it. Notice that with pain, many times the, where the pain is felt is not where the cause of the pain is, in terms of the energy flow in the body. So do a little exploring. I found, for instance, that headaches often come from a lot of tension down in the lower back. And pain in the knees can also be aggravated by tightness in the neck. So look around. Use your ingenuity. And try to have that attitude that the mind is like earth. It can stick with these things but not get involved with them. It can be present to them but not involved. And when you have that kind of solidity, then you really can, clearly can begin to see cause and effect in the mind. As you try different approaches and you see what works and what doesn't work. If the mind lacks that solidity, you, you want things to be a certain way, and then when they're not a certain way, you get upset. You don't really see what you're doing. It's like scientific equipment. If you put it on a wobbly table, then no matter what it's measuring, you can't really trust the measurements, because the wobble is in there as well. But if it's on a table that's solid, and the table is in a building that's solid, then you can do precise measurements. So here it's your determination that whatever comes up, you're not going to get upset, you're not going to get excited, you're just going to watch and learn. And 
that kind of meditation, even if it's not quite yet as still as you would like it to be, or as blissful as you'd like it to be, is a meditation where you learn. And learning is heading in the right direction. <laughs>